السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما مزيدا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear brothers and sisters in Islam During the khilafah of Amir al-Mu'minin Umar ibn al-Khattab رضي الله عنه when he would sit in his majlis, his gathering, those who would sit with Umar an were the Ashaykh of Badr, meaning the elders from Badr, the elders from the Sahaba who had fought in Badr. But there was one youngster, one young individual from the youth who used to be invited 
to sit amongst the elders and with Amir al-Mu'mineen Umar ibn Khattab. And he was Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma. One day, some of the elders asked the question, why is it that this youngster, amongst all of the youth from the Sahaba, he's the only one who is invited to sit amongst us? All of us have sons. There's plenty of youth. Why is he the only one who is invited to sit with us? So Umar radiallahu an, he wanted to show the Sahaba. He wanted to teach them why Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma was selected. Why he was chosen to sit amongst the elders. And it was from the way of Umar radiallahu an that during his gatherings, he would focus on the Quran. It wouldn't just be politics and organizing the affairs of the Muslims. When they would sit down, they would start by reciting something from the Quran and reflecting on the meanings of the ayat, of the verses. So one day, he brought them a very small surah, a surah that all of us have memorized. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ He read the three verses from the beginning to the end of the surah. And then he asked the Sahaba gathered around him, what is the meaning of these ayat? What is the Lord telling us in these ayat? And when they came to the last verse, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to exalt him and to praise him and to thank him, he asked, what is the meaning? What do you understand from this surah, the small surah? Some of the Sahaba said, Allah is telling us to praise him and to glorify him when we are victorious. And this is a correct meaning in the verse. But there's a deeper meaning that Omar wants them to reflect on. Some of them said, Allah knows best, Allahu Alam. Then he turned to that youngster, Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma, and asked him, Ibn Abbas, what do you understand from these verses? He said, Allah is telling the Prophet والسلام, that the end of his life has come to an end, that his life has come to an end, that he will die soon. Therefore, he needs to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be thankful that if the Fat, meaning the Fat of Mecca comes, O Muhammad, that the end of your life is near. So glorify and praise your Lord and seek his forgiveness. SubhanAllah. This understanding that this young man understood, Umar radiallahu an, he said, this is the same understanding that I have of these ayat, of these verses. When we look into this story, there's many things that we gain, many things that we benefit. Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma, during this story, his age was somewhere between 15 and 25 somewhere between 15 and 25 years old. And he was sitting with the elders. And he reached that high level of understanding. And we're going to mention another story towards the end of the khutbah that will show us how Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma reached that high level. There are many benefits that we can gain and abstract from this story. But the main benefit that I want to focus on today is something that Umar radiallahu an that he did when he saw the potential he saw the ability that Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma had he empowered this young man he empowered him and made him from the leaders even though he was very young at that time When we look into the situation of the youth, we always hear the youth, they are the future, which is true. We always hear in the days that we live in, people complaining about the youth, that they've gone astray. And there's many reasons why the youth have reached the situation that they have reached today. 
but perhaps two of the main reasons is an improper upbringing and I'm going to give some examples on that as well and the second thing is not empowering the youth sometimes we think that they have to become older in order to serve their ummah they have to become older to serve their country and their communities but when you look into the seerah of our beloved Prophet والسلام, you see that he empowered the youth from a very young age. If they had the potential, if they had the ability, he would empower them Just like Umar ibn Khattab in this story empowered Abdullah ibn Abbas When you look into the beginning of the seerah, where did the Sahaba radiallahu anhum used to meet with the Prophet والسلام, to learn the Quran and to learn the basics of the religion. They used to gather and meet in the house of Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam radiallahu anhu. Who was Al-Arqam? Also from the youth, from the teenagers who accepted Islam at a young age. A young man who opened his house to the Prophet وسلم, and the companions to learn their deen even though he realized he could be risking his own life. He could be persecuted. So much could have happened to him from Quraysh. But yet, he did this to serve his religion. And he was from the youth. One of the biggest responsibilities before the hijrah, before the migration of the Prophet ﷺ to Medina, one of the biggest roles, the biggest responsibilities, who was it given to? It was given to a young man. A young man who learned about Islam in the house of Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam. He accepted Islam there. He learned the Quran. He learned the basics of Islam until he became very strong in his understanding of Islam and very strong in his faith. Musab ibn Umayr radiallahu anhu, who was chosen to be the first ambassador of Islam, chosen by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam to represent Islam and the Muslims, to establish Islam in Medina before the migration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the companions radiallahu anhum. A young man who accepted Islam in his late 20s. So here he is in his late 30s, given the major responsibility <laughs> to go to Medina and to teach the new Muslims Islam and to spread Islam amongst the people of Medina. What was the outcome? There was no house left except for Islam entered in that house, meaning either everyone in the house accepted Islam or at least one person accepted Islam and they understood Islam through the da'wah of Musa ibn Umayr radiallahu When you look at those who preserved the knowledge for this ummah, in the hadith which was narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, خُذِ Quran an arba To learn the Quran from four individuals, four people, learn the Quran from them. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, and he started with him radiallahu anhu. And Mu'ad ibn Jabal, wa Ubay ibn Ka'ab, and Salim, Mawla Abi Hudayfa. When you look into these four companions, these four Sahaba radiallahu anhum, three of them were from the youngsters, from the younger Sahaba. Only Ubay ibn Ka'ab radiallahu anhu was a bit older. When you look at the Sahaba who preserved the knowledge, one of the greatest scholars was Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu. Mu'adh was at Al-Bay'ah Al-Aqaba Al-Thaniyah, the second pledge of allegiance made by the Ansar to the Prophet والسلام, before he migrated to Medina. They said he was about 18 years old at the time. And they said that he was Amrad, meaning that his beard hadn't even grown yet. He learned from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He became from the scholars of Islam who the Prophet 
taught us to learn the Quran from. And look what else our beloved Prophet Ali said about Mu'ad, about this youngster. He died. When the Prophet died, Mu'ad was probably about 27 years old. So we're talking about between the age of 18 and 27. Look at the level that he reached. He said, alayhi salatu was saying about Mu'ad, A'lamu ummati bil halali wal haram Mu'ad ibn Jabal. That the most knowledgeable of my ummah when it comes to halal and haram is Mu'ad ibn Jabal. This youngster. This was the level he reached in knowledge at that young age. And the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, when he saw what he reached, he didn't hesitate, but he told the people. And another hadith, he said alayhi salatu was salam, Mu'ad, that Mu'ad is in front of the other scholars, Ratwa. What does this word mean, Ratwa, in the Arabic language? The scholars of Lugha, of the Arabic language, they said Ratwa means as far as the eye can see, or as far as the arrow can go. This is how advanced and how in front of the other ulama, Mu'ad ibn Jabir radiallahu anhu was. And he was from the youth. And if you look at the Sahaba, who preserved the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who are the main narrators of the hadith of our beloved Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam? The main ones to narrate the sunnah, who were they? They were seven. Imam Asyuti Rahimullah, he mentioned in his book known as the Alfiya, which is 1,000 verses of poetry. He mentioned the, fa the famous seven narrators of hadith the who narrate the most hadith of the Prophet He said, وَالْمُكْثِرُونَ فِي رِوَايَةِ الْأَثَرِ أَبُوْ هُرَيْرَ يَلِهِ بِنْ عُمَرْ وَأَنَسٌ وَالْبَحْرُ كَالْخُدْرِيِّ وَجَابِرٌ وَزَوْجَةُ النَّبِيِّ These are the seven. Abu Huraira, Ibn Umar, Anas Ibn Malik radiallahu an, Wal-Bahr, as he described him, the sea, the sea of knowledge, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, and Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, and Jabir, and the wife of the Prophet Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are the seven most famous narrators to narrate the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you look into their age, all of them were from the youngsters, all of them were from the youth. Five of them were from the teenagers or perhaps reached their early 20s at the time of the death of the Prophet ﷺ. The two who were a bit older, Jabir was about 28 at the time of the death of the Prophet ﷺ, and Abu Huraira was in his early 30s. SubhanAllah. These are the ones who preserved the knowledge for the Ummah. When you look at the knowledge and the importance of knowledge, Knowledge protects the ummah. Knowledge protects the youth. And the days we live in, the days of fitna, where different ideologies, different methodologies are being spread like wildfire through the ummah. What can protect our youth? What can protect our ummah? It's authentic knowledge. To understand the Quran and Sunnah properly according to the way of the Sahaba and how they understood the Quran and Sunnah radiallahu anhum. This is the only thing that will protect our youth and the only thing that will protect our ummah. When you look at the success of this ummah, you look into our history, the most successful generation known to mankind in any nation was that of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. What was it based on? It was based on knowledge based on knowledge, true understanding of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, true understanding of the kalam of Allah, of the Quran. Nowadays, as Muslims, alhamdulillah, we still focus on teaching our children the Quran. But we do it the wrong way. We don't do it properly. If you look into the way of the Sahaba, how they used to memorize the Quran, how they used to focus on learning the Quran. Jundub ibn Abdullah radiallahu an, he said, we were youngsters around the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And he said, we used to learn the Iman first, and then we would learn the Quran. We learn Iman first, 
and then we'll learn the Quran. So we increased with the Quran our Iman. This is where we've gone wrong today. We have our children memorize, memorize. They don't understand what they're memorizing and they don't understand why they're memorizing. And they don't understand who they're memorizing for, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once they understand the importance of the Quran and their need for the Quran and why they memorize the Quran and they understand the meanings of the Quran, that's going to change. That's where you're going to find the power in our ummah. When the, when the ummah understood the Quran, even during the golden ages in history, look how we excelled when it came to medicine, when it came to engineering, aviation, all of these things we excelled in, in science, because the scholars understood the importance of knowledge. As an ummah, as a nation, we're going to excel once we start to focus on the importance of the Quran and the importance of knowledge. And knowledge will protect us. At the time of the Khilafah of Ali radiallahu an, when the group known as Al Khawarij, those who make takfir of the Muslims, who call Muslims to be kufar, to be disbelievers, when this group spread, what did they do to teach these individuals? What did they do to advise these individuals? They brought the main scholar of this ummah, that youngster who we talked about at the beginning of the khutbah, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, to debate with them, to advise them. And what happened to this group? 4,000 of them, 4,000 sat with Abdullah ibn Abbas. And they were very similar to many of our youth today who have fallen into deviant ideologies who have gone astray in certain, following certain methodologies. Because these youth, they see the things happening to the ummah around the world, and they're overtaken by emotions. But when you have emotions that are not based on knowledge, you fall into mistakes, just as these khawarij fell into mistakes. But once they sat with Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, and understood their mistakes, and understood the knowledge and the true understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah, 2,000 of them immediately made tawbah and repented and returned to the truth. Alhamdulillah. Knowledge will protect the Ummah. Barakallahu liwakum fil Qurani wa Sunnah wa naf'an wa yakum bima fihi ma min al ayati wal hikma. Aqulu kawli hada wa staghfirullah liwakum fa staghfiruhu innahu hu al ghafur rahim. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, when you look at the story of Abdullah ibn Abbas, عنهما, he wasn't just a Sahabi who was blessed with potential, who was blessed with ability, and just focused on that, or focused on the dua that our beloved Prophet والسلام, made for him. He was someone who strove for it. He worked hard. And the story of how he obtained knowledge, that he saw at a young age the importance of obtaining knowledge, and he would go to the doorstep, go to the doorsteps of the elders from the Sahaba, and he would wait there at door time during the extreme heat until they came out to ask about the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Talent and potential is not enough, and this is a lesson for us. It's a lesson for all of the elders and for the youth as well, that if you want something, you have to strive to obtain it. And us as an ummah, when we see the potential of our youth, we shouldn't just sit around and say, MashaAllah, in the future, you're going to be able to do this and this for the ummah. We need to inspire them and empower them. The group of Bani Najjar, from the tribe of Bani Najjar, they came to the Prophet والسلام, and they were very proud of how a young individual that they had was so strong in the Quran. He had memorized and he had a beautiful tilawah and a correct tilawah. This young individual, 
who was a teenager at the time. They were so proud of him, they, they brought him to the Prophet ﷺ. Zayd ibn Thabit. They say, here is Zayd, who has learned so much of the Qur'an, and so good in the Qur'an. We want to show you what he has done. When the Prophet ﷺ saw his potential, what did he do? Most of us now, what will we do? We say, mashallah. We take out our phones, take some selfies with the young Qari. Huh? We, we do have some videos to put online. And we all say, mashallah, mashallah. In the future, this young Qari is going to be this and this. This young man, he's going to reach high levels in the future. But what did the Prophet ﷺ do? The Prophet ﷺ saw his potential and he immediately empowered him. He immediately told him, he said, I want you to learn the language of the Jews. He wants to make sure that this language is understood, the letters that are written between him and the Jews who were living in Medina, that everything is authentic, what they're saying, what they're writing, and what they're, what the, what they're relaying, what the Prophet wasallam writes to them. He immediately empowered Zayd, I want you to learn their language. And Zayd said that within 15 days, I perfected the language. 15 days. This is the potential that the youth have when we empower them. And then he became the official translator for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and for the government. This is the potential that the youth have, but it comes back to us to empower them. And it's upon the youth that once we empower them, they also strive to empower themselves like Abdullah ibn Abbas did radiallahu anhumah. The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam when he mentioned the seven who will be in the shade of Allah on the day when there's no shade except for Allah, he said, Shabu nashaf ibadatillah. A youth who was brought up in the obedience of Allah. We always focus on this part of the hadith, thinking about the reward and the ajr that these youth can get if they practice Islam at a young age. But also in this hadith, it's a way of empowering the youth from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That if they want to reach this high level, this reward, that they have to strive to obtain it as well. We've seen in the stories that we mentioned, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the potential that the youth have once we empower them and the importance for our ummah, for the betterment of our ummah, and for the future of our ummah, the importance of empowering the youth. And I'll end this khutbah with a quote from our brother, Malcolm X, rahimahullah ta'ala, who said, the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. Thumma'alamu rahimah lillah wa iyaakum anna Allah qad amarukum bi amr bada bi bi nafsi thumma thanna bi malaik dil kiram faqala azza wa jal إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما ويقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى عليه بواحد صلى الله عليها بعشرة اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وعنم على نبينا محمد ورد الله من الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وانسائر الصحابة أجمعين اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر اللهم أعداك أعداء الدين اللهم أتي في نفوسنا تقواها وزكيها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها ربنا إننا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم إنا نسألك أن تكون عونا ومعينا لإخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وقيم الصلاة يحمكم الله الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله. So
وسلموا واعتدلوا واستوا يرحمكم الله الله اكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم امها اخونغ معلومات تكا دنوان ادمي وقتوغا كشنا ما دينغ بوي 